Hey everybody, how are you? This is Ron Kuhlman from RCS Online Solutions coming to you with the Success Secrets Revealed live stream show again today. Today we have an amazing guest with us, Kareem R. Ellis. He's a dynamic powerhouse speaker and breakthrough strategist. He's going to give us some great uh, tips and ideas given, you know, the, the environment we're in uh, and going forward, right? So it's not always about where you are, it's about where you're going, right? So uh, first I want to tell you about how the show got started, then I'm going to tell you uh, a sponsor, and then I'm going to uh, in give you uh, Kareem's uh, introduction. So the show got started, I have a, 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 a radio show once a week, every Monday from 11 to 12 a.m. here in the Boston area, and it's called Internet Marketing and Business Solutions with Ronald Kuhlman. We have about 1.7 million reach. Unfortunately, because of COVID, they have the station closed, just running reruns. I, I, I had to pivot because the reruns are great, you know what I mean, but they're not current. So I wanted to ensure that my listeners and viewers were getting current, up-to-date information from some of the best speakers out there in, uh, in business coaches. So that's why I created this show. None of the speakers get paid to come on this show. None of the speakers pay to get on this show. I don't get paid to do this show. This is all of us just giving back to you. And, uh, you know, uh, we get to see each other and, and talk and listen and learn, right? Listen, learn, serve, and earn is what I like to say. We have one sponsor. That's my company, RCS Online Solutions, where we help business owners and entrepreneurs much like you attract, convert, and retain their ideal customers and clients to achieve even greater success. Success. Let's be honest. At the end of the day, if your if they if, if your ideal customers and clients can't find you for your products, services, and solutions, then you're losing money. You're losing customers the ability to serve and help other people have a better life and make some money. If you're coming up on the first page for your name or your company's name, I'm here to tell you so what. No one's searching for those. If they know those, they're going to pick up the phone and call you, right? Uh, what they're searching for is the product, service, or solution that you provide. So you need to come up on the first page of the search engines for the product, services, solutions you provide. That's what I do, my company, and we do it so well, we don't even charge you until after you receive the results that we agreed upon, okay? So now let's get to the best part of this show. Kareem R. Ellis, again, as I tell you, I'm just going to read his bio. Dynamic powerhouse speaker, breakthrough strategist. With over 10 years of experience in the field of speaking, training, and coaching sessions, as an author of GPS My Success, Kareem takes pride in developing both leaders and champions. His sole desire is to create an atmosphere of greatness in the lives of people he coaches with on a daily basis. A prodigy of the world-renowned speaker Les Brown and a certified member of the John Maxwell leadership team, Kareem speaks, inspires, and teaches breakthrough development and leadership principles to 60, 70 organizations yearly. Some of these companies and organizations have included Honda, General Electric, Ford Motor Company, Anaheim, Kroger, the United States Postal Service, the Department of Defense, uh, DFAS, SHRM, and many, many more. All successful organizations understand that effective leadership is the heart of every business, and Kareem prides himself on leadership creation and uh, development. As a trainer coach, Kareem has several engaging uh, group programs specifically designed to take your leadership skills to the next level. Please help me welcome Kareem Ellis. <laughs> I, I love it. That was my clap trap. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love it. I love it. I love it. Listen, I, I listened to your last guest, so they said you got to come in with a smile and energy, right? Exactly. So a smile and energy. Yeah, and Brad, I tell you, I've used his stuff back in the day when I was first doing Facebook Lives, like, you know, five years ago. I've known Brad a long time. He's for yeah. real. He's good at what he does. And he is. <laughs> yeah, and he really does help people. But it's important. You got to come in with energy and a smile. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> they say only got 30 seconds to impress somebody. At 30 seconds, you lose them. So, That's you know, on stage, we know we have to come in and bring that energy level up, right? I love Absolutely. it. 
<laughs> yeah, I love it. Now, Kareem, I, your 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 bio is very interesting. I mean, Les Brown, he is like uh, he's like a god to me. I've I've met him, and I've yeah. told him, I said, "You are my Mr. Washington," right? Yeah. And I, I met him a couple of times, but right? and I actually spoke on a stage that he was speaking on at a different time. Um, but um, when he was sitting at the restaurant, I stalked him. I saw him. He took a picture <laughs> with somebody stuff because we were all in the same hotel. It was a big yeah. event. In, in LA, right? A big charity event right after um, the Academy Awards. They were having like big parties. So I, but I, so I knew roughly where he was in the hotel, right? So yeah. I just went around and I, yeah, I was like, man, I thought I couldn't find him. And pow, he, he made the mistake of having to eat, right? So he was, so he was, so he was stationary long enough, right? Yeah. And uh, and I found him and I went over to the to, to the people and i did two things one i paid for his dinner and he you know his his, br his brunch right but wow. uh, the second thing was i says do you have sweet potato pie here mm. and she said no because i would have loved because you know how he talks about yeah, i know i know sweet potato pie and make your toes curl make right toes wiggle yeah i said mom you can pie so good and make you wiggle your toes you can eat it with yeah. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. And uh, so I would love to have Les on this show, man. Yeah. I mean, just I listen to him almost every single morning. Mm -hmm. I will listen to him for like, because he talks about how the first 50, 20 minutes, uh, uh, your your brain works at 10.5 uh, yeah. wave cycles per second faster yeah. than at any other time of the day, right? Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, him, Jim Rohns, I, I'm a huge fan of all yeah. that. Uh, a very mm. wise man once told me that what goes in is is what comes out, you know. And uh, we were just talking about yes, that. So, yeah. so you just told me that. Yeah. <laughs> so um, enough of that. To tell me more about uh, who you are, uh, what you do, and, and who you serve. Because okay. I already know you're a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said some stuff earlier. I'm going to loop back around to about less. I'm going to bring back up because I think it's so. Um, profound that you said it because that's how a lot of people achieve success they don't take no for an answer <laughs> they don't take no for an answer much like you i stalk less the same exact way i stalked him for years he didn't realize it to after he became the mentor i said oh i was plotting and planning for you it was almost like um wiley e. coyote trying to catch the trying to catch the road runner i was running the traps they just kept backfiring on me right yeah uh, so my name is kareem ellis i'm a native of indiana here in indiana i uh, moved to cincinnati about the age of five and i've been a cincinnati native ever since ever since um i am a powerhouse motivational speaker uh i am a breakthrough strategist um obviously you read the bio earlier about some of the organizations and companies i've spoken in front of uh yes i'm also a member of the les brown platinum speakers team i'm also a john maxwell leadership uh, trainer as well and i am living my passion i tell everybody that in order for you to achieve dynamic success you have to know what's the vision that's written for your life and you're looking at a walking talking example of a man that discovered his vision and saw his vision through to completion and i'm just getting started we're just getting warmed up <laughs> I, I love it man i love it and you say just getting warmed up let me get back here when you say just getting warmed up what's coming well here's the thing right and and i'm clear on this i say everything starts with vision facts about it one of my favorite passages in the book of life says write the vision and make it plain and so one of the things I learned from Les that I was guilty of up until the age of 26, I was living what he calls a misplaced life. That means that we said it earlier, we're talking about default versus design. Uh, let me give you a prime example. I'm sitting here with my iPad, right? Yeah. And when I got this iPad from the store, I got it on default settings. Now I got the iPad originally used on stages when I speak. That means I had different uh, applications and software and things I needed to physically download onto this iPad in order to use it for its intended result. But it came on default settings. So it's my responsibility to first figure out what I want to use it for and then acquire the resources for it. That means the coaches, the mentors and things like that when it comes to my personal life. And so what I was doing before the age of 26, I was living my life by default. I didn't have any direction, any purpose other than find a job, create a paycheck, go home, live my best life. But it was a misplaced life. OK, so what I encourage the listeners of this call to think about throughout the course of this presentation, am I living by default or am I living by design? Meaning, do I have a grand idea of what I've been put here on this planet to do and what I'm supposed to achieve when I'm here? Mark Twain said the two most important days of your life is the day you're born and the day you discover why. I love that, but I feel like he fell short on one key element. 
It's the day you're born, the day you discover why, and most importantly, the day you decide to walk in it. Because up until the age of 26, I knew I was destined for greatness. I knew my gift. I knew my talent. I knew I was excellent at communication. I knew I could attract people towards me. But once I discovered the purpose behind why I was here, I refused to walk in it because I didn't think I had the right criteria. I didn't think I had the degree. I didn't think I came from the right side of the tracks. I wasn't connected with the right people. My money was very funny. Um, at one stage in the game, I was living in my parents' basement. So I denied my calling because I felt like I wasn't ready to walk into it. Okay. So the I your syndrome. Yes. 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 Or what I call Stockholm syndrome uh, to, to the worst version of yourself. <laughs> I was at mercy to the worst version of myself. So when I say I'm not even warmed up yet, that means I've had a grandiose look over where I'm going in this stage of the game. And a lot of times you can tell where a person is going by the company they keep. Right now, God has me an awesome, awesome company. So it gives me a foreshadow of what things are to come. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it, man. I love it. And it is like uh, one of the things, just going back to Les, because I listen to Les and uh, mm -hmm. Jim Rohn and a few people every day. Uh, one of the things he talks about is OQP, only yes. call the people. You know, surround yourself with you know the top five people, and, and you, you, you will learn not just about your income, you know what I mean, because that's the example he gives, but will be within a thousand or two of those, but also your, you know, your success in life, your mental, your emotional outlook, you know, your relationship status, how much drama do you have in your life? You know yeah. what I mean? So you, you want to, and there, and that is, and I kind of got it confused in the very beginning because I first heard it from a gentleman named Bill Walsh. He is a goal with Power Team International. Yeah. And, and I took it literal. And I mean, uh, <laughs> I ended up getting divorced and everything. You know oh, I mean? wow. And then like three years later, I go yeah. back to another event and he's given the same example. And then he goes, well, this really, this doesn't count because sometimes, you know, it, it's not necessarily who you're married to and it's not necessarily like your family members, mm -hmm. but it's those that are outside that circle that you choose to celebrate. I sat back like this and said, I was 48 years old, married to my 24, to my 28 year old wife, right? <laughs> and I said, damn, did I get that wrong? <laughs> yeah, well, so, so here's the thing. You said something that's so important when you say oh, only quality people. Again, let's go back to default versus design. How many people pick their quality people by default versus design? Right. A lot of us just settle for what we think only quality people work. So when people say, how did you connect with Les Brown? That was by design. That wasn't by default. When I knew the arena or the vision for my life, I knew my goal was to be a world-class national, international motivational speaker. I wanted a mentor who had already been there, done that, got the T-shirt, got the coffee mug, and most exactly. importantly, has made it through the setbacks and the losses because a lot of times we're so focused on surrounding ourselves by people that are winners that I learn more from your losses, your mistakes, and your setbacks than your victories. So I started pursuing less, I want to say maybe four years before I actually landed on his doorstep. You know, it, yeah. was, it was a, definitely a journey, but only quality people are so powerful because if you look at the most successful people in the world and you look at their strategies and their systems, they're they're surrounded by literally only quality people. They're they're surrounded by winners, movers, and shakers. They don't yep. have anybody in their squad that's there by default. It just doesn't happen. I love it, and and I like how you you talked about learning more from people's failures. And uh, uh, Sharon Lecter, and and I don't know if she uh, created this or if she requoted somebody, but mm -hmm. she said a smart person learns from their mistakes. Yes, a genius learns from other people's mistakes. I love it. I love it. You know what I mean? And, and I love that was so cool because I agree with you. You know what I mean? We can learn from our own mistakes, but why? If you you know, when you get a mentor, when you're starting out in something, find a mentor or, or someone mm -hmm. who's been here and done that. You don't ask your broke brother-in-law for financial advice, right? Mm -hmm. You want to you want to get a, a mentor or an advisor, somebody who's been there, done that preferably in the exact same arena you're going in. Yes. And uh, and you always, I, I just did a thing on, um, every now and then I'll do a, a post on some of the people I've met and, and I'll, I'll say something along those lines, like, you know, you want to associate yourself with people who are playing at five levels above yes. the level you want to play at. So yeah. if you want to be at this level, you want to associate and play with people at, that are up here. And a lot of times that means you got to pay up to show up to blow up. You got to pay up 
<laughs> pay up to show up to play. You got to go to the events. You got to yes. go to these events so you can be in the area with these people. They've got to yeah. see your face. You've got to talk to them. You've got to add value first because they got everybody mm -hmm. trying to feed off them. You know what I mean? And uh, so I, I love what you're talking about, man. You're it's right up my alley. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I tell people that um, one of the things I live by success principles, something I call VSM. VSM. V stands for vision, S stands for strategy, M stands for mentor. So, yeah, I, thought we were, I thought you said BSM. I thought we were going somewhere totally different. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, like, over. Yeah. So, v is in victory. <laughs> so V is in victory, S is in strategy, M is in mentor. And the reason why I say VSM, I, I, I'll keep referring back to this because people say, how did you achieve success? How did you create a debt-free lifestyle? How did you escape the nine to five to chase your goals and dreams? Because most people I encounter, they're stuck. They're yeah. literally stuck. They know where they want to be, but they're not sure how to get there. And so, number one, you have to have the vision. And it has to be a clear vision of what it is you want. I'm amazed how many people have clear vision when they go to order their, their lunch or their dinner. Very quickly, you can take something back if they made a mistake and put tomatoes on it when I asked for tomatoes. We're clear about what we're going to put on when we walk out the house every day. But when I say, man, what's your vision for 2020? What are you trying to achieve by 2025? Most people have no idea what their vision is. This is why this is so important. It, until I know my vision, every other resource I need to pull it off, I don't even know what that is. In other words, in order for me to be successful by studying the right mentor, I have to know where I'm trying to get to because anyone successful can be a mentor. But like you said earlier, that doesn't mean they're a good mentor for me. That doesn't mean they're a good mentor for me. So unless I know where I'm headed, if my job is to learn real estate, because I started in real estate 20 years ago, and that's what I used to get out of the nine to five to walk into speaking full time. I needed a real estate mentor. Okay. Yeah. Um, not just any successful person or someone who did stocks or multi level marketing. I need a mentor specific to the vision set up for my life. Let's talk about the concept of money because money is one of the, the greatest success tools you ever come across. But what I learned with a lot of people, because they don't have a vision to attach the money to, they waste that valuable resource. How many times have we heard stories of millionaire lottery winners, mega million dollar lottery winners that are broke within six to seven years? Because they got all this money, their life should have been changed, but they didn't have a vision for the money before the money showed up. So the money left as quickly as it came. We see pro athletes the same exact way where they're getting paid millions of dollars for four years to throw a football downfield. And it's great until they retire and then they're broke and go, how does that happen? Well, they had a vision for acquiring the money on the football field. But the moment the game was done with them, they didn't have a vision of what to do with the money when it was there. You know, how do I put this money in place so it's perpetual so I can honestly, if I have to, just live off the interest alone. Mm -hmm. Every payday, I've run into people where they don't have a vision for their paycheck. And and let me th make this clear to anybody listening. If you don't have a vision for what to do with your paycheck when it shows up, I can think of about 20 people that have a vision for what to do with your <laughs> money since you don't. From bill collectors to scammers on out. So yeah. it's important for me to know where I'm headed in life because the resources I need to be successful I wouldn't know what to do with it, okay? Let me give you a couple more. Uh, let's talk about the concept of time because this was one I was really guilty of. When I was in my nine to five days, I put in my eight hours, a little bit of overtime if need be. I'd get home and I would veg out in front of the TV literally till like 11, 12 o'clock at night, not realizing if the vision was to be a world-class speaker, if the vision was to be an entrepreneur, those hours where I was off the clock should have been dedicated towards building the dream. Not hanging out with my buddies, not watching Netflix, not going on vacations on, on credit cards where I couldn't afford them. It should have been focused on the realization of making that vision a reality. So when I say everything starts with vision, you can have access to as many opportunities as you want. But if you don't have a vision to attach it to, you can't do anything with that opportunity. But waste it. it. I love it. And, and you're hitting on some so many fundamentals and so much important stuff. And you have to have mm -hmm. that vision. It has to be strong enough that it actually pulls yeah. you. You're <laughs> not driving to it. It's pulling you to it. Yeah. You have no choice but to make it happen. But yeah. uh, I love how you're breaking it down on, on you know, you're right. If somebody is going, you, you know, if I go to Outback Steakhouse or, or to mm -hmm. Capitol Grill, I know exactly what I'm getting and how I want it. And but then, you know, if we sat down and people don't now, I'm a little bit different. But, the, you know, the average person doesn't have things mapped out. I mean, I got my days mapped out 
week, you know, months from now, right? I can tell you what I'm doing on a Tuesday in, in, in August 5th. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, but, but a lot of people don't. And what that does is it, it just, it creates, you know, just mm -hmm. almost like nothingness because there's nothing coming from it. And, and turn off the damn TV, man. You know what I mean? And I can't tell you how many people sit there and just stare at their phone all day. You know yeah. I mean? All those hours could be just read a book, listen yeah. to a podcast, anything, man. Just, you know, and plus think about when they're doing that, they're physically just sitting there. So now their health is at risk, too. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's it, it's crazy. In today's world, if nothing else, what's going on, right? Uh you know, I've all, I've known it for for years, but um, you know, the government can't save itself. Never mind save you or us as a whole, right? So, <laughs> you know what I mean? He can't even he can't even agree. Half of them hate each other. They want to indict them. They want to send them to prison. They call them liars. Okay. I mean, they, they they hate each other literally. They they, yeah. they you can feel it. So they ain't here to save us. You've got oh. to figure out a way to save yourself. You've got to figure out your income, your mental and emotional. Where are you safe? Where are you stable? Your environment. You've got to create That's that. Right. It, it doesn't just happen. You've got to create it. And if you walk around blindly waiting for somebody to give you something or to take care of you, yeah. I mean, that, that, that ended at about 12 when your parents you know, were done, right? <laughs> You, you're right. Listen, at the age of 12, my mother said, I'm tired of making you food. Go in there and make your own peanut butter. Is that <laughs> I'm tired. If you're not going to get off your butt and go get your dream, you cannot expect someone to dump it on your lap. And I love what you said about the current state of affairs because it, think about it this way. It only took three months in a virus to give us the real on how this country works. Which, oh, my God. My, the first message I gave this year, I said 2020 is the year of vision. And the reason I said the year of vision, because when you go to a doctor's office to get your eyes checked, they tell you your goal is to have 2020 vision. That's perfect vision. So for me, 2020 symbolized perfect vision. But in order to have perfect vision, you have to address anything that's causing astigmatism. And what we've seen in this country in, in a three year shutdown, we saw that most people are not as financially astute as we thought they were. It took three months for people financially out of work to be in trouble. We found out that people don't have cash reserves. We found out that people don't have uh, jobs that feel they are essential. We found out that a lot of our appointed leaders um, are not really leaders. <laughs> we found out a lot of the relationships during the public space that we looked up to as role models um, are just as messy as some of the stuff we see off scene and off camera. So this is a chance for a lot of people to address uh, the proverbial elephant in the room and be clear when it comes to my vision in 2020 um am i living under false pretense that everything's going great or am i honest with my current situation and my circumstances is my money a little funny is this job showing me there's no stability down the road and for the first time do i understand i can't bank on my government to take care of me you know mm -hmm. these are the questions folks should be answering themselves because what i've learned is this as an entrepreneur there's not a shortage of money there is never a shortage of money what there is when seasons change is a shortage of people that are qualified and equipped with enough knowledge, know-how, and willpower to understand how to get to the money. There's yeah. no shortage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. There's no the money hasn't gone away. It's just yeah. moved from one pocket to another. You just have to figure out how to move it from your pocket to mine. Yeah, I might, I might be dating myself here, but I like to say I've been about Benjamin since they had small faces. But <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord i love this uh, and i'm quoting someone right so yeah, I don't yeah. yeah and uh but anyhow so but but you're so right and and what really got me is i'll tell you the first like two weeks i mean i sat back i was like dumbfounded i was almost like i don't want to say in a coma but i was just what happened was what got me was that my vision my thought process of the united states and how the world saw us and how we, we would respond to any crisis or, or issue you know what i mean yeah. going on was um in literally like three months right this country was was brought to its knees yes. more so than world war one and world war two i yeah. mean what china Russia and, and North Korea, what all these people allegedly wanted to do to us for decades and hundreds of years, this government, this 
you know, boogeyman yeah. virus did for them in three months. Are you yeah. kidding me? <laughs> uh, it's, it's funny how life works. Now, I know you have a, a vast, diverse um, group of followings here. I know that everyone has different beliefs and whether it's political beliefs or religious beliefs, I'm not going to turn this into a religious show, uh, but I'm going to speak what's on my heart. That's the only, the only thing I can do is be honest. Um, what I believe is this. Is I believe that when things get shut down, a lot of times that's God's way of saying, I'm trying to pull something out of you. I'm yeah. trying to pull something out of you. Uh, we have become so dependent upon the system to save us. And we don't realize that there are special things we already have tucked inside of us that's waiting to get out, that's supposed to help create our success. And what I'm talking about for a lot of you out there is your God-given gift and talent or your expertise. And this is something I've spoken on stages for many, many years. What's your gift? What's your talent? What's your expertise? Because in this type of climate, those that dominate are folks that know how to get paid or monetize their gift, their talent, their expertise. So let me give you an example of this because I want your, 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 your viewers to really catch where I'm going with this. I tell people my favorite animal in the world next to my Yorkies is a cheetah. And I say, I love the fact that a cheetah can run 70 miles per hour and a cheetah can do this on instinct. And I've never seen a cheetah confused about using this God-given gift of speed. A cheetah knows this gift of speed is used for two things. Number one, to catch my meal. And number two, to evade other predators that can cause me bodily harm. So if a cheetah knows how to use this gift and talent to catch his meal, the question I have for all your listeners right now in this series, this season of COVID, where things have been shut down and money's not flowing, what are you sitting on right now that's your God-given gift and talent that is just waiting for you to put it in the right environment so it can be monetized to create your capital? When I look at where I'm at right now, this gift of gab was the very thing I used to not only climb the corporate ladder, but to help build my entrepreneurial ventures. So I say gift and talent because a gift and talent is something you're born with. But for some of your listeners, they're sitting on expertise. There's something they've been doing for 10, 15, 20 years that they have the know-how that they can put a book out. They can teach a seminar and someone will pay you for your expertise if you learn how to take it and monetize it. So those are things I think a lot of folks need to pay attention to in the current season. But again, it ties back to vision because if I don't know what I want out of my life, I won't know what resources I'm sitting on externally and internally that I should be using to make my vision a reality. I love it, man. I love it. And you're right. And it, that's just, to me, it, it has nothing to do with, with religion. It has to do yeah. with just understanding that, you know, mm -hmm. we all have some God-given gift inside of us. And yeah. right now is a great time. You're right. Whether it was the, the, the locusts or whatever the plagues were that, that yeah. we were hit with, I think there was seven of them, right? You know, yeah. it, Five weren't enough, we hit you with six. If six you would wake you up, we came with seven. If that was enough, we came, I think it was only seven. I guess people got the message at that point yeah. right? and started acting right. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise there would have been an eighth, right? Yeah. So, um, but, you know, but the bottom line is, right, mm -hmm. it's a wake-up call. It's basically yeah. saying, you know, we got to reset the clock here. Absolutely. Now, some people will manipulate that and they'll say, well, yeah, we're resetting the clock because these people have too much money and these people don't have it. It has nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. they, they found some service, yeah. right, that they made that money. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, 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 and for some reason, you know, if you're sitting at home and you're watching Netflix and you're eating, you, you know, Doritos and drinking beer all day, you know, you're not, you know, you got no reason to complain when somebody is, is making, you know, a million a year, right? Right. They created that. So, um, but yeah, but so you got some people who miss it, but this might be literally just like a sweet wake up, a slap time to wake up and, and for individuals, you know, uh, on some level and there's people way above me and all that. But it's, it, it, it's like, I knew, that I couldn't rely on the government, whether it's social security, whether it's 401ks, the yeah. you know, whole thing with the Roth, where they tell you yeah. to put your money in after taxes and we're not going to tax you. I'm like, yeah, right. You know, that's today. You know, you're going to have such debt in 15 years. You're going to be taxing that. Right. Yeah. So, so, you know what I mean? It's like, how do people even believe this crap? Right. So, uh, you know what I mean? They just they want to, they want to be protected and saved. But, uh, so so yeah. here, here's a different change of here's a change of thought. Instead of being so dependent on the system, we got to get to the mindset where God has God is trying to shift us so that we become the system. 
We have to stop depending on the system to understand. Gifts, talents, expertise, uh, mentorship, connections. Um, you have everything you need to be successful at whatever it is you want to be. Um, on my office desk, um, I keep this treasure chest full of acorn seeds, right? And it's a reminder that whatever it is you've been put here to do, you're already that thing. You're just in seed form. You're already that thing. You're just in seed form. So understand, um, until this seed is properly planted, it will never transform into what it's designed to be. The problem with most of us, we don't plant our seed because we got way too much stuff going on. We're too plugged into a system that has been taking care of us that we never decide to plant our own seed. If there ever became a food shortage to where you couldn't go to a grocery store and go get your own fruit, the amount of people that would become farmers overnight would be astronomical because they have no choice but to plant their own seed and eat their own harvest. So for yeah. a lot of people out there, and this happened to me at the age of 26, at the age of 26, I literally lost it all. I went through a breakup that left me homeless. I slept out my car for 90 days, reluctantly moved back home at the age of 26 into my parents' basement. My morale dropped. I lost my job. I was literally trying to hide my car on different parts of the street to keep the repo man from getting it. I owed everybody <laughs> money. Uh, when someone called my phone as a bill collector, I would say, no English, no English. He's speaking no English. I was doing everything I could to avoid and I could not get hired. And it's not because I have a bad record or a bad track record. What God was doing was giving me strategic downtime to say, it is time to plant your seed. That which I put inside you, it is time to bring it out. I would not be here on this video call with you right now talking to you. And not I went through that downtime years ago where I was forced to plant my seed. So for those of you guys out there where you woke up and they told you you're not essential and you're waiting for that $1,200 check from the government and you're not sure how you're going to make ends meet, what I'm asking you simply is this, is it time to plant your seed? Is it time to pull out of you what's genetically been locked inside of you since the foundation of the world? Because I know you're great. The question is, do you know how great you are? I love it, man. And that's so true. Everybody has a gift. Just get out there and, and, and do it. A passion. Yeah. Uh, we got about five minutes left. I want to make sure you have a giveaway here. I'm going to scroll it now. I absolutely do. So for uh, the first five people that join me on my Instagram, which is Kareem Ellis one, I'm going to give them uh, five, well, five people, five copies of my book, GPS, my success. Um, if you are in a season where you feel like, um, your vision is stagnant or you feel like you're living with an astigmatism where I'm squinting. I can't read the bottom line. I can't see what they're saying to me. If you're somebody where your job has let you go and you're not sure to make ends meet, if you're someone where you have a dream and you're not sure how to cross over, this book is the bridge for you. It's going to talk about not only how to set a vision with clarity. It's going to talk about what happens when you run into these sticking points uh, where you lose your way, you lose your signal who you should be connecting with in this season is going to help you get to the finish line. And most importantly, are you guilty of cheating on your goals and dreams and everybody else's agenda? Uh, for years, I was guilty of that. I was guilty of taking 40 hours of my work week and using it to make somebody else rich, send yep. someone on their vacation, put their kids in private school where I'm barely making ends meet. So if that's you and you're ready to go to the next level, I encourage me to join me on my Instagram. I'll leave this up all day for the first five people, and I'm going to let my wife pick it. So you guys don't get mad at me. I'll let her go into my feed and say right. the first five people, I'll let them pick it, free copy of the book. And that's good because I'm going to go unfollow you on on Instagram, and then I'm going to refollow you, right? And hopefully I can be one of the five. <laughs> I got you. I got you. <laughs> hey, do you, have the, uh, do you have that in, like, PDF form? Um, yes, it is in PDF form also. Yep. Cool. So uh, because that, that's something that I think that somewhere down the line, I mean, you know, you obviously you got to monetize it, but a lot of people need that type of information. And I love, I love the size. Yes. So it's clear, it's brief, it's clear, and it's concise. Yeah. I, you yeah. get these books that are 500 pages, nobody reads them. So uh -huh. even if they have so much value, they're never going to get it. You know, you want to keep it under 60 to 100 pages and, and you yes. want people clear. <laughs> big, you know, you want print big so people don't have to squint because then it takes their mind off what they're reading. You just want people to just go through and digest it. We're, yeah. we're in a society where they want instant gratification. So I don't know too many people going to read those thick, those, those thick. <laughs> they're not going to do it. So my books are as right. thin as possible so you can get in and get out. And most importantly, I want you to be able to apply. I want you yep. to apply it. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Excellent. I try to ask everybody this, and I know we're running short sure. on time. So um, can you give me three tips mm. of uh, three things that uh, if somebody who's in business mm. or just starting a business, they're in business and they want to scale or they've already been successful and now they're trying to exit. Can you give me three tips on, and it might, one tip might cover all three groups, but okay. three tips on what people can do to be even more successful than they are today. Gotcha. Okay. So for all my startups up there, um, I want you again to be clear about the vision. And I can't say this enough because the vision will always dictate your results. Um, if you are not clear where you're going starting out, you need to surround yourself with people that are going in the same same uh, direction as you. Um, or secondly, you need to find a mentor. You're never too old for a mentor. Find someone who's already done what it is you want to do so they can give you a blueprint and a game plan that you can follow. Now, when you get the blueprint and the game plan, understand most blueprints and game plans are aided. So you need to be able to look at the game plan. And as my wife says, what's your twist? In other words, how can I do it? but do it slightly different from my demographic, from my from my customer base or whatever have you, so it increases the volume. So how should I be using social media properly to bring people in? Should I be having contests to bring people in? Uh, should I be doing Facebook Lives and giving away free content to bring people in? So for my startup group, um, I want you to get clear about your vision. Most people that have a failed vision get failed results within three to five years. Uh, what was the second group? The second group was for folks that are already in business, have had some success and want to scale. OK, so for my folks that are already in business, uh, I'm going to encourage you to dream bigger. OK, um, what I see with a lot of people is a lot of people get comfortable by connecting with people that's inside their comfort zone. OK, so in other words, we're going to mirror the five people we hang with the most. So if I want a million dollar business and I'm not there. I need to hang around million dollar people. OK, just because we have similarities does not mean I should hang around you because the company I keep will ultimately dictate my results. There's a reason I hang around Les Brown and not everybody else, because I know the results that I want. So when you have already made it out the starting gate and you've been in business for a season or two, you have success. Most people are guilty of getting comfortable and comfortability is the death of success. If you are not always in growth mode, eventually you'll die. Ask any tree. The moment the tree stops sprouting leaves, that tree's on the way to death, all right? So for the second group, watch the company you keep. Hang around, folks, and don't be intimidated. If you see someone super successful, my belief is this. The reason why God is allowing you to see it is not for you to be envious or jealous, but I'm trying to get you to stretch your limitations because if I did it for them, I'll do it for you. But it's hard to pursue what you can't perceive. You got to be able to see it to go after it. And then what's the last group? Uh, the, uh, they've had success in their life and, and they either want to exit or, or just find more mental and emotional peace. Okay. But they've already had success in business. Okay. So we're going to go back to the seed principle concept. Remember, a seed, uh, uh, a seed actually produces after its own kind. So it starts as a seed and then it gives off additional seed. So I believe in order for you to go to the next level of evolution, you have to be willing to pour out what's been poured into you for the last 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years. Your job is not to suck up all the knowledge, the information, and then go die and take it to your grave with you. So who are you mentoring on a regular basis that's going to help the longevity of who you are? Les Brown is 75 years old. I pray Les stays with us to the year, to, to, to he hits 100, 101. But one thing I do know about Les Les's legacy is secure in every speaker he's spoken into, he's poured into. His speaking uh, genetics and DNA is locked deep inside of me. So when he is no longer here, a part of him is still with me. So I know on a regular basis, I have to take my information and pour out. Second reason why this is so important, that I want you to understand that your life mirrors that of a glass. So over the years, as people pour knowledge into your glass, your glass eventually gets full. There's no more room inside that cup. So if someone were to come along and pour wisdom into me, that wisdom will spill over and become waste. So I have to routinely take a look at my glass and say, I need to pour out into your glass, your glass, your glass. And as I fill their glass up with information, knowledge, and wisdom, a powerful thing happens. Now my glass has been reduced and there's more room inside of my cup for other great people to pour inside of me. So at some stage of the game, you have to be willing to create seeds that look like you. You got to pour your wisdom and knowledge out. Can't I love it, man. This has been this has, this has been amazing. I love it. We, we have humor, information, knowledge. Uh, oh, 
yeah, people got to listen to this a couple of times. I'm going to go back and listen to it. And uh, believe me, this is going to be, I got all these will be all over a whole bunch of different social media platforms. I'm sure you're going to share it on yours. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that uh, you have time and, and came on here, man. You, you benefited us. But I got to ask you, I mean, you know, if you were a female, I wouldn't ask, but how mm -hmm. old are you? So I'm 44 years old. <laughs> yeah, because you, you look like you're about 25, 26. Yeah. We started talking, and, and earlier we were talking about music, and, and, and you know, what, what we were talking about was like early 90s, mid 90s, and you were like fluent, right? So I'm yeah. like, how old is this guy? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Because it was like you lived it, you didn't hear about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so here's the thing, right? Um, part of vision is having a vision for all of your life, including your health. And what I've learned from being around other successful folks that were millionaires and other successful folks in the real estate world, a lot of people let their health go to pot. And so what happens, they spend all their life accumulating all this wealth and the way the wealth gets spent at the end of it all, it gets spent basically on trying to maintain their health because this is failing, this is failing, this is failing, this is failing. Scripture yep. tells us the body's a temple which means it's my job to make sure I take care of this temple. If I respect this temple, this temple will get me to 100. Facts about it, my goal is to last to 120. 120? <laughs> How about 121? There you go, one up. <laughs> hey, it was funny, I forget who it was. Uh, it wasn't uh, Jim Rome, but I think it might've been him talking about, uh, uh, no, it was Les Brown who, who <laughs> talked about uh, the gentleman who used his quote uh, about, uh, if you, about the moon, you know, because you land amongst the stars. Yes. Uh, and he, yeah. And, well, he talked about a gentleman that he met that was actually using his quote. And mm -hmm. I said, I met somebody who said he didn't want to live to be 89. And then I told him, well, that's because you ain't been 88. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You know, it's all a matter of perspective, right? It's just well, that simple. <laughs> it's that simple, but we have to be accountable for what comes out of our mouth because I do believe there's power, life, and death in the tongue. So we have to be in routine of speaking into existence the very thing that we want. Because right. if we don't speak what we want, by default, we will speak what we don't want and we'll live that best version of that life. So absolutely. And I agree with you big time. That's why, you know, when, when people are saying, and sometimes I'll, you know, if I know them well enough, I'll say, no, you don't mean you will. You, you I mean, you don't, you, you don't yeah. mean you're going to try. You mean you will. There you so go. so yeah. it's all about that language because, you know, if you're not committed, your language, you can tell right off the bat just by listening so, to somebody where they're at. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> so true. Yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, listen, this has been amazing. I'm probably, uh, you know, there's a couple of people uh, I wanted to, you know, maybe every quarter bring on again, if you don't mind, if you got time. Uh, this has been excellent. And uh, if you do have this pod podcast, I'd love to be on it, man, because uh, you're yeah. good people. And uh, if you see Les, tell him Ron said hi. To tell, to tell him he's got an open date here. I got you. I got All right? you. All right. Thank you so much, man. It's been a great, great interview. All right. Bye. Be blessed. Yeah.